Okay, so ever feel like you're running on fumes? Like, where's that energy reset button? We could all use a little more energy, right? Totally. And yeah. that's what has me so intrigued by Qigong, this whole idea of tapping into your inner energy reserves. It's like having a secret weapon for well-being. Exactly. And this article we're diving into today, well, it describes Qigong as becoming the gardener of your own energy. Oh, I like that. Tending your inner garden, so to speak. <laughs> right. It makes energy work feel a lot less mysterious and a lot more, well, doable. Absolutely. Plus, this article doesn't assume you're already a key gong master. Which is great because most of us aren't. Exactly. It starts with the basics. Like, what does key even mean? Yeah. It's like learning a new language. You got to start with the alphabet, right? Totally. So give us the crash course, key and gong. What are we talking about here? Okay. So key is this vital life force energy. It's flowing through all of us right now. Okay. That's what keeps us going. It's the energy behind everything we do. So it's like our internal battery pack. Exactly. And gong yeah. means skillful practice, mastery over time. Okay. So we're mastering our life force energy key gong I'm following. But like <laughs> how? What does that actually look like? Paint me a picture. Well, imagine a combination of slow, deliberate movements okay. with focused breathing and mental concentration. Yeah. That's key gong in a nutshell. So it's not just about striking a pose. There's an internal element, too. Oh, absolutely. You're cultivating awareness of your energy, learning to guide it, and ultimately use it to enhance your well-being. It's like conducting your own energy orchestra. You got it. Imagine having this technique to, like, manage stress before a big meeting. Oh, that would be amazing. Right. Or just feeling more limber and energized in the morning. Okay, now you're talking. This isn't just about feeling zen and relaxed, is it? The article mentions some other benefits of qigong, like actual health benefits. Right. Relaxation is definitely a nice perk, but there's more to it. We're talking improved flexibility, reduced stress, even a stronger immune system. Wow. Those are some bold claims. Yeah. But we're talking about real noticeable changes. Yeah. Qigong works on multiple levels. It's like giving your whole system a tune-up. I love that. But how? Like, how does moving slowly and breathing deeply lead to all these benefits? Does it say anything about how that works? It gets really interesting here. So traditional Chinese medicine talks about energy pathways in the body called meridians. Oh, yeah. I've heard of meridians. They're like energy highways. Yeah. And just like highways, they can get blocked. You know, okay. Qigong helps clear those blockages. Yeah. It's all about getting that energy flowing smoothly again. Like a deep tissue massage for your energy. I love that visual. Right. And when your energy flows freely, yeah. while your body and mind, they can function at their best. This is making so much sense now, but this is like ancient stuff, right? Yeah. Is Qigong still relevant today? 100%. Yeah. It's rooted in ancient wisdom, but the principles are timeless. Okay, good. In fact, you know, some hospitals are even incorporating Qigong now. Really? No way. Tell me everything. Hospitals using Qigong. That's fascinating. It's part of this movement towards like holistic health care. You know, looking at the whole picture, Qigong fits in perfectly there. So it's not about ditching modern medicine. It's more about adding to it. Exactly. It's another tool you can use. And the research is pretty promising. Some hospitals are using it for pain management, helping patients with anxiety, even speeding up recovery after surgery. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, I'm seeing the potential here. But I have a confession. When I first heard of Qigong, I pictured like one standard practice. Is there more than one type? You're actually right. It's not one size fits all. There are all sorts of Qigong styles, each one with its own focus and benefits. Like what? Give me some examples. Well, there's medical Qigong. As you can probably guess, it's all about healing and preventing illness. Okay. Then you've got martial Qigong, cultivating strength power, coordination. Oh, okay. And if you're looking for something more spiritual, there's spiritual Qigong, inner peace, mindfulness, deeper connection with yourself. So it's like picking a Qigong flavor to match your goals. I love it. What about that animal one? The article mentioned that. Ah, yes. Qigong of the five animals. Super cool stuff. What is that? So you mimic the movements of different animals. Tiger, deer, bear, monkey, and crane. Okay, that's amazing. What's it like? Moving like a tiger. Each animal has these different qualities, energies you cultivate through the movements. Like the tiger embodies strength and courage, right? Right. While the deer is more about grace and gentleness. So you're like embodying those qualities through movement. I can see how that would be powerful. You know, I've never thought of myself as a conductor or a tiger, but I do like the idea of having more control over my energy, feeling more balanced. And that's the beauty of Qigong. 
Mm -hmm. It's about self-awareness, self-mastery. Okay, I'm sold. But how does someone actually start doing Qigong? Do you need a teacher? Having an instructor is super helpful, especially starting out. But there are definitely resources out there if you want to, like, dip your toes in first. Okay, so what kind of resources? Where do you even start? Books are great. And of course, online, you've got tons of stuff, guided meditations, videos showing the movements, even online courses that can teach you the basics. So you can kind of ease into it at your own pace. But what about the energy part? Can you really learn that from a book? That's where the actual practice comes in. As you do the movements, as you focus on your breath, you start noticing things, subtle sensations. What do you mean? Like warmth, maybe a tingling, a sense of energy actually moving through your body. It's like developing a sixth sense almost. Exactly. It's gradual. But with practice, you become more and more aware of your own energy. You get better at working with it. That's so cool. It kind of reminds me of meditation, but with movement. You're definitely onto something. Yeah. They both involve mindfulness, being present in your body. This has been eye-opening. I went from like, what is Qigong to I need to try this. How about you? Totally. It's a practice that really encourages you to be curious, to explore. And remember that question the article asked about what would your energy garden look like if you started tending to it today? Oh, yeah. That's a powerful image. It really makes you think about, like, the power we have to shape our inner world. It's true. And, you know, one of the most important tools we have for that is something we often take for granted. What's that? Our breath. Oh, right. The article mentioned that our breath having a hidden superpower. I definitely want to hear more about that. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. Qigong teaches that our breath is deeply connected to our life force energy, to our ki. So it's more than just like breathing in oxygen. Way more. Think of it like this. Every inhale is a chance to bring in this fresh revitalizing energy. Yeah. And each exhale, you're letting go of anything stagnant, anything that's not serving you. Wow. I never thought about it that way, but it makes so much sense. Right. And with Qigong, you learn how to use your breath to calm your mind, to balance your emotions, even to improve your physical health. It's like unlocking the superpower we all have inside. No capes required, just mindful breathing. I like it. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the one thing you hope listeners take away from all of this? Hmm. That's a good question. I think the most important takeaway is that Qigong is really about Connecting with yourself, with your own inner healer. It gives you the tools to take charge of your own well-being. I love that. So for anyone listening who's feeling inspired, what would you say to encourage them to take that first step? My advice, don't overthink it. Just start by paying attention to your breath for a few minutes each day. Notice how your chest rises and falls. Feel the air moving in and out. That's the beginning of your Qigong journey. And from there, explore pick up a book, find a teacher, or just move your body in a way that feels good. Every little step counts. I love it. This deep dive has been incredible. I feel so inspired to start incorporating some of these practices into my own life. That's wonderful. And remember, approach it with curiosity. Be kind to yourself, and don't forget to have fun with it. Absolutely. So to our listeners, we encourage you to take a deep breath, tune in to your own energy, and discover the amazing potential of Qigong 